Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new updated 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina Display. Now, for the most part, these are spec upgrades, but we do get one major hardware change, and that's the new Force Touch trackpad, which is also launching with the all-new Retina 12-inch MacBook, which we'll have to review next month. But the updates here include the new Broadwell processors, Intel Iris Graphics 6100 for better GPU performance. We also get one hour of additional battery life, and we get faster PCIe storage, which is actually twice as fast as the previous generation. Generation model. Now in this video, I'm taking a look at the baseline configuration, which starts you off at $1299, and that gets you a 2.7 gigahertz dual core Core i5 processor with 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of SSD storage. So in this video, we'll compare this to the previous generation MacBook Pro, and then we'll take a look at that Force Touch trackpad to see what it adds. All right, first step here is to unbox our MacBook Pro. So first thing we need to do is cut the plastic along the back. Flip it over, lift the lid. Definitely much heavier than the MacBook Airs I unboxed yesterday. And there we go. Lift the tab here. There's our MacBook Pro 13 inch. Uh, we have a little plastic here to pull off, so let's pull the tab. Slides right out. So there we go. So first up is our 60 watt power adapter with our MagSafe 2 connector. So we have our cable here. That connector is protected by this little plastic cover. Great thing about these is that they're magnetic, so they snap on pretty easily and they pull off pretty easily, so you don't yank your computer off the desk if your cord gets snagged by somebody walking by. We also have our travel adapter here, so you can fold out the prongs. Uh, you can pull this off to add the extension cable or add the universal wall adapters when you're traveling. And of course, you have cable management here, so you can wind up your cable and tuck it neatly in your notebook bag. We also have our extension cable neatly tied up. I'm not gonna take it out, but we also have our paperwork here. So if we pop this open, we should find a quick start guide, a nice colorful quick start guide that's referring to OS 10 Yosemite, which of course is installed on this computer. Of course, we also have our ports and we'll explore all this in this video. We have our safety warranty and regulatory information, as well as our Apple stickers and a cleaning cloth, something you don't get on the MacBook Air. This cleaning cloth is Apple branded if you look closely at the corner. And we have one more piece of packaging, which is a piece of paper covering the keyboard. All right, next step is to boot up our MacBook Pro. Just gonna hit the power button in the upper right corner. Now, taking a closer look at our new MacBook Pro, again, the design is unchanged here. All the changes are internal. Once again, we have that beautiful 13.3-inch LED backlit display with IPS technology with a resolution of 2560 by 1600, good for 227 pixels per inch, so very much a retina display. Now, this is an IPS panel, so it looks great off-axis, certainly much better than the MacBook Air. Now, that glossy panel also has an anti-glare coating, which is fairly effective here, so it's able to minimize glare even though you still get some reflection. We also have our full-size backlit QWERTY keyboard and the top row is dedicated to certain functions. So for example, we have our screen brightness, we have mission control and launcher. We also have our keyboard brightness, media controls, as well as our power button. Now toward the top of the display, once again, we have a FaceTime HD camera, good for 720p video. We also have a little LED indicator right next to it, along with an ambient light sensor, which works to adjust the brightness of the display and the keyboard. Now, unlike the MacBook Airs, the MacBook Pros have an edge-to-edge -edge glass panel. And at the edge of that panel, you'll find a little rubber gasket that seals up the MacBook when it's closed and prevents the glass panel from mashing against the keyboard. On the left side of the computer, we'll find the MagSafe 2 charging port, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, a USB 3.0 port, as well as a combination headphone and input jack, as well as two microphones. On the right side, you'll find the second USB 3.0 port, an HDMI output, as well as a SDXE card slot. Now toward the front, we'll find a little notch for lifting up the lid of the MacBook Pro and the hinge is perfectly weighted. So when you lift up the display, it doesn't pick up the entire MacBook. But of course, this is certainly much heavier than the MacBook Air. Now in terms of the hinge, once again, that hinge is hiding the ventilation to the chassis of the MacBook Pro. This uh, mechanism also allows the uh, chassis to ventilate whether the display is closed or not. Now on the bottom of the MacBook Pro, we have a single piece of aluminum held on with pentalobular screws. The idea here is that this really isn't meant to be user upgradable because everything is basically soldered to the motherboard, including the RAM. So if you want more than eight gigs of RAM, you definitely want to order that when you buy your MacBook Pro. Now on the left-hand and right-hand side of the MacBook Pro, you can see we have these ventilation grills, which also act as structural members and speaker outlets for the stereo speakers. 
Now the biggest new feature for the new MacBook Pro is the new Force Touch trackpad, which looks like the old one. It has a nice glass surface with multi-touch gestures. The big difference here is internally. So instead of a physical clicking mechanism, instead we have this Taptic Engine, which replicates the physical click. It also has four force sensors, so it can actually determine how much force you're applying to the trackpad. So this means that you get this new gesture in OS X called Force Clicking. Now using this trackpad is very similar to the old one. That Taptic Engine actually gives you the sensation that you're actually clicking on the trackpad and it's nearly indistinguishable. It's actually really interesting because it feels like the trackpad is moving, but it's just the haptic or taptic engine that's giving you this haptic feedback. It's really nice. Now, the great thing about this trackpad is that you have this nice even clicking across the entire trackpad. It's not stiffer toward the top like it is on the uh, traditional trackpad. Now, force clicking happens when you press harder on the trackpad. So you get the first click and then you'll get a secondary click when you force click. Now, force clicking can be used in a number of ways. One of them is to bring up quick look. So for example, if you have a video thumbnail, just force click on it and you get a quick look of the video. You can also look up a word in a web browser or something like that by force clicking on the word, which is very handy. Now, perhaps the most interesting application for force clicking is within media playback. So if you force click on one of the media controllers, you can actually speed up your media scrubbing by pressing and holding deeper on the trackpad. Now, when you're doing this and you press harder on the trackpad, you actually get a sensation that you're moving through the detents of the fast forwarding speeds. And when you lift up the finger or reduce pressure, you get the same in reverse, which is really interesting. It's very effective. Now, there are many other ways of using force click, and I'm sure many more will be added soon. But one of my favorites right now is previewing web pages uh, on the website. So for example, if you have a web page full of links, instead of opening individual tabs, you can actually force click one of those links to get a preview of that page before opening it, which I think is very useful. Now, if you look really closely at the trackpad, you can see there is a slight amount of movement, and that's because the four sensors need some movement to detect pressure. Now, force clicking is a software feature, so if whatever you're doing doesn't support it, you won't get that sensation of the secondary click. Now, you still get a clicking sound, but it's a little different than the traditional trackpad, so let's go ahead and take a listen to the difference. The MacBook Pro also features a set of stereo speakers and they sound excellent. So let me go ahead and play a sample clip and compare it to the 13 inch MacBook Air. We've designed a force sensing multi-touch trackpad. This adds a new dimension of interaction. We've designed a force sensing multi-touch trackpad. This adds a new dimension of interaction. Next up, let's take a look at our Geekbench scores to see how those new CPUs perform. So we can see we score about 3331 on the single core score and 7008 on the multi core score. And that's an improvement over my Haswell powered MacBook Pro from last year or from 2013. I have a late 2013. That scored about 2947 on the single core and 6299 on the multi core. So not huge gains here, but they're gains nonetheless. Now, in terms of the speed of our SSD, we're seeing big gains here on the read speed. So we go from 730 on the last generation to 1300 on the new one. The write speed is about the same, 700 versus 700. Next up is Cinebench, which will give us an idea of the graphics performance of the new MacBook Pro. So in terms of OpenGL, we scored about 30 frames per second, and the CPU scored about 318. Now, we compare this to the previous generation, which scored 22 frames per second and 220 CBs. That's a pretty big gain here. So graphics is definitely the biggest gain in terms of system performance. So in the end, the MacBook Pro Retina display remains my favorite MacBook out there. It's the right size with the right capabilities and the right price tags. So for $12.99, I think the base configuration is the perfect computer for almost Almost everybody out there. I think it's also a great bargain in terms of its battery life as well as its performance and its great display, which is one of the best out there. And with the new update, you get better performance, better battery life, and a new and improved trackpad. So that's going to do for me in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in my next video.